Hi folks, welcome to this next episode on the MLRS project. And in this video I want to show you another range test. So this is a more realistic range test now. And what I'm showing you is the following. I placed a receiver in this location here. And this location has a direct line of sight to the summit of this mountain here. So what I will do, I will place the receiver here drive up to this mountain and then will try to establish a connection uh, with my transmitter uh, when I'm on this place here. So I first will show you the results and then I will add some comments on what you have seen in this video. So let me show you the experimental setup. Here I'm on this balcony, there's the power supply. Here is the flight controller which uh, does all this muffling, right? And here is one of his receiver units. And in the back here, you can't see it, there is this uh, summit on the mountain where I'm going to now. So it's not the thing which you're seeing in the front. So it's sad that we have this cloudy day because then you would see how far away it actually is. Right, and this is this approximation to this uh, line of sight. Unfortunately, we have this building here in, in front of it, but that's the best I can achieve now. So see you in a yeah in in a quarter hour. Okay guys, we are now on top of the summit. So you see that the weather is not ideal. And if there would be a clear sky, we could see the building where I have installed uh, the receiver uh, down there somewhere. Right? So it's here supposed to be eight point three kilometers away. And I'm going to switch on the transmitter now. And as before, I have not done this experiment before. So I have no idea what's going to happen. So here this is the transmitter. I Maybe I place it here. And then I'm switching it on. Welcome to OpenTX. Switch warning. Okay, there are some switches. You know this game. Here, this one. Oh wow, this was fast, impressive, unbelievable. So we have a link quality for the RC data of 80. We have a link quality for the CL data of 60. The RSSI is 90, right? So we have actually a very good CL connection. So we get quite all of the bytes through it. So I say this is an excellent connection, right? Given the simplicity of the system so far, that's cool. Very cool. So you see that. <laughs> okay, so I hope, I'm not sure I'm going to do the experiment again. Maybe I can switch it off and on again to see that we really got the connection here. So let's try it again. Welcome to OpenTX. No telemetry connection. Telemetry. So this really initializes and connects in a, in a second. I mean, this is super. Look at this. 8.3 kilometers past, I would say, right? No problem. This can be even further improved. So the seal quality, seal link quality can be improved. That's impressive. Okay, see you down there again. Bye bye. So let me just briefly scan around. So this here is the building I was showing or talking about on the Google Maps and this here would be the parking lot. So we are really on this summit over here. Okay. So let me make some comments. And the first comment I'd like to make is that this is not a range test like those where you fly out a certain distance until you reach failsafe. So this is a much harder test in the following sense. So first, we obviously had been miles away from a failsafe situation. And second, the difference is that I was switching on the transmitter, right? It's harder 
to establish a connection than to maintain a connection. So what the receiver needs to do is it needs to find the transmitter, it needs to synchronize to the transmitter and only when the, connect, the link connection is established. And this was harder also because of another aspect, because at startup there is some muffling ping pong type of communication going on between the transmitter and the receiver. So when you start up and the muffling starts to flow, there will be negotiations like setting up the data rates and blah, blah, and so on and so forth, right? So there is a bit higher traffic which needs to be passed so before the normal muffling communication can go on. And on the transmitter, you could see it as the initialization phase. So what you have seen is that it first reports telemetry connection, but when there is this initializing phase and when it reports, that, uh, it doesn't report anything, but when the normal operation starts. And it's this is a kind of a more serious test that this initialization is passed than just to look out for how far your RC link would go or anything like that. So I just wanted to make this clear uh, about what you have seen. What I also want to briefly do is to convince you a better about what you have seen here in the experiment. So therefore, let's look at Google Maps. So uh, I was placing the receiver up here and there is a direct line of sight to the summit of this mountain here. Now, if there would have been a clear sky, you would have seen the summit of mountain. Unfortunately, the weather was pretty bad. So all what you were seeing concerning the mountains had been actually these mountains here, or these hills rather, right? So they are just 1.5 kilometers out, while the distance which was uh, done was actually all the way up to here, right? So this Google Maps reports here 8.3 kilometers. And to convince you a bit about that, we can scroll into here. Um, so let's scroll into here, right? So, um, and so that you can correlate what you see on the map, which what you have seen on the video. So here, this is the fence uh, where I was standing at. So I was roughly here at this location here, right? And here, this construction, uh, so when I was uh, sh showing around, right, you could see this construction here. And here, there is then this building, which you might have seen in the shadows, right? So on this Google Maps, obviously, uh, it was taken at the time where this building was under reconstruction. So there was a building before and they, they, have, they have rebuilt it. But now this is two years ago or something like this, right? So there's now this building here. And here when there's a parking lot, uh, I think this might have also been briefly seen. So hopefully uh, this will convince you that I indeed had been up there here at this place 8.3 kilometers away from uh, where the receiver had been. Another thing I want to comment on are the modules which I have used here. And here I used the ones uh, which use this E28 uh, modules from eByte, right? And there are a couple of reasons for that. So the one and obvious reason is that these output just more power. I mean, these other modules which I've designed, right? They just have a SX chip and they have no power amplifier stage. So they can just do 10 milliwatts. But here I wanted to go safe and wanted to output as much power as I have available. And so I used these modules. So it's also here on the transmitter, right? So it was connected here to the transmitter bay by some cables. And, uh, and I've actually config configured them to uh, work with uh, 500 milliwatts. So this might not sound so impressive now because uh, it was using a lot of power, but I will come to the number crunching at the end of the video and we will discuss where uh, what these numbers actually mean. And um, another reason for using this module is that, is that it is by far the simplest to build and to realize at this point of time. And one thing is obviously because for example, you don't have to deal with this RF stage, right? You just get this module, you sold it on, it's easy to solder. And I mean, we are in this chip crisis, which makes it difficult to get the chips which you need, for example, for such a module, right? It's a G4 here. So this uses an F103. And while it's not totally easy to get them, you still can get them. 
right? When you looked on AliExpress and are you a bit creative, you can get this chip. So it's, it's not actually a problem to get chips. So the, all the parts here are actually available and they are not so difficult to solder, right? So they are not too small on that, that. So you can solder them all by hand with a solder iron. So you don't need a, a hot air station or something like this. Maybe this crystal, this ceramic resonator is maybe a bit the most difficult part but also this can be done with a solder iron so if you have a good solder iron with a reasonably good tip and you have a average soldering soldering skills then then this should be doable for you so so that's one reason that if you wanted to do use such a thing then this probably is the one which is the most easiest to get to at this point of time and um, then the last uh, point for using this is because, I mean, we are using here with modules and we can assume that this is uh, well made and that e every module that you buy is exactly the same. While for these things where I solder this by hand, this power, st this, this RF stage by hand, I mean, I don't know what's coming out or, or how one module compares to another module, right? I mean, there might be a bit more solder there, where the impedance... Uh, the, match might be a bit misaligned or so. so I don't know how much these different modules vary in their power levels and performance, right? Well, for this um, devices here, it's clear that they should be pretty consistent among each other, which also means that it's reproducible. So if, so if you would get such a piece, you could take the results which you have seen in this video as an indicator of what you probably will get. Next, let's have a brief look on the data which you could see on the transmitter display. So this obviously was produced by the Lua script I was using, right? And there's a lot of data and I don't want to go into all the details here. There's just one number I want to focus your attention to, namely, so here this number, the link quality for the RC link. So that tells you how much of the RC data has received the receiver and the link quality for the seal link, which tells you how much of the seal packets have received the receiver. And you can see that these numbers are different. So here that's a relatively small difference. So it and but when you look at the video, you will see it, it can go around. So it can also have quite some substantial difference. What you also see is that the link quality for the RC data is always better than for the seal data. And this might be surprising at first because both the data is are sent in exactly the same packet. But this is what I've explained in a previous video, what I'm doing. So this is a complete data pick, uh, packet where you have the header bytes, then the crucial RC data, and then some more RC data and the CL data. And what I'm doing here is that I have an additional CRC here, which allows us to check the validity of this piece of the data, right? And obviously we get more frames where this data is valid compared to the number of frames we get where the complete data is valid. So I try to explain this in this previous video. I don't want to go into that. All what I want to tell is that to show you this in experiment, that whatever the true explanation is, it seems to really work. I mean, it's, it's not a difference by a world, right? I mean, it's not like that you get 10 times far uh, longer range, right? But it's a substantial improvement. And so that's the trick I'm playing here in order to compensate for the fact that we have relatively, that we have large uh, packets so that we effectively have a behavior which more is like that of having just small packets. And uh, so overall, I have to say that I'm really pretty happy now with how the RC link works. I mean, this intermediate CRC concept seems to work and help and makes us closer to a situation where we have smaller packets, right? And I also have to say that I really start to gain some sort of trust into the system. So, I mean, it's, I'm just happy with, it, with, with how it works and it looks reliable and it connects quickly and connection is here. And so I, I, I'm pretty much just really short time away from, from using this on a daily basis in my copter. So to say that to start really see this alpha testing. So I, I'm quite happy with that. Now concerning the seal data, there's still a bit uh, which can be done. So currently it's extremely simple. I mean, 
if a sealed data packet is lost, then the data is lost and, and it, the muffling passes and so on have to account for that. So what I'm currently working on, I'm not yet finished, it's, it takes me more time when I have thought is to give every uh, data a second chance. Right, so that, that if a pet sealed packet, sealed data is lost, it should get a second chance to be transmitted. And you have seen that from the bandwidth, there is still the bandwidth available to do that. So I would think that this really helps a lot. And then I have some more ideas where there are further things, things one can do, uh, in which probably will further improve the situation concerning the sealed data link. Okay, so let's come to the last topic I want to discuss, number crunching. And up front, I clearly want to say that nothing here is really scientific or proper or whatever, right? It's just numbers and we let's do it just for the fun, okay? So we had been 83 kilometers out. The power was 27 dBm, 500 milliwatts. Now, if we would scale this down to 10 milliwatts, we would have to scale it by minus 17 dB. And uh, you have seen that we have not exhausted the link, right? So we had been something at, let's say, minus 95, minus 90 dBm or something like this, ISSI. And uh, the theoretical receiver sensitivity is minus 105 dBm in the setting. So whatever value you want to assume, so I mean, we didn't have been at the, at the limit, right? So let's assume that we had a link budget, budget of 10 dB, right? So we can add this in. So this means that we need to scale it down by minus 7 dB, which would yield that we would get 3.7 kilometers at a power level of 10 milliwatts. Now, the goal I have set out, and I mean, it's, I just set it out to have a goal, right? So <laughs> there's no reason for it, or I don't know. That is five kilometers at 10 milliwatts. So it seems that we are rather at five kilometers at 25 milliwatts at the moment. So we somehow need to squeeze out 3 dB more somehow. So I hope that this, this, this um, additional games I told you when we play that, that this will bring us to this level. But for the moment, I think we uh, are more accurate number might be probably this five kilometers at 25 milliwatts. I also want to compare to the previous uh, very crude and non-experimental range test, right? Where I was using a power level of minus 18 dBm and walked out by uh, at by 120 meters. And if we would scale this up to 10 milliwatts, then this would correspond to three kilometers. And again, I mean, these numbers, they don't mean anything. We are just, we are doing this just for fun. But it's nevertheless a bit revealing, at least, that this number here is not so different than this number here, right? So it's, it's not off by orders of magnitude. And maybe these numbers have a tiny bit of meaning and maybe this might have some significance, but anyway. So this is the number crunching, right? And that's all I wanted to show you for the day. Thank you for your attention and hope to see you again. Bye bye.